distribution for Guadalajara. Um, so a little over a month ago, the exhibition Seeking Son at the Max Center opened. This is uh, an image by Donatiu Cabello from that day. Uh, just a little reminiscing. Um, oh, there you go. And the, the exhibition is called Seeking Son, and it talks about the work of engineer and architect Alejandro Son. Uh, most of his work was based in Guadalajara. Guadalajara is a second city to Mexico and will go through, well, the exhibition goes through five buildings. Uh, this one is Edificio Mulvar, photographed by Sonia Madrigal, one of the participants that is not here today. Then we have uh, La Concha Acústica that was photographed by Adam Wiseman, who isn't going to be here today, but will on June 1st. More information about that at the end of today's session. Uh, also, the Mercado Libertad or San Juan, San Juan de Dios, which was probably Alejandro Son's most memorable building, um, photographed by duo Lake Verea. And joining us today, uh, Sara Pfeiffer, who photographed, like Mimi said, the El Archivo del Estado de Jalisco, the state uh, archive, and Onis Luque, who photographed um, the CTM at the Mahtak housing unit. And before we dive into this, uh, just a little recap would be to say that Alejandro Son produced around 500 buildings, most of them in Guadalajara. And the exhibition only spans five of these 500. And this today will go through mostly two of the buildings that were photographed. So it's, it's a Son's Guadalajara through these two buildings will be an interesting um, journey. So over here, first, these images are Google Maps, and we're standing uh, behind the Archivo del Estado de Jalisco, and I'll go through some of these. This is, I think this is 2022, no, 2023. So we'll, we'll try to fit in how things are looking right now, how they looked, back when they were first uh, built and when our photographers went and caught them too. So all of these are from El Archivo. We'll get back to these little spikes late, later today. And then we go to Sete Meatemajac. Sete Meatemajac was built in 1973. This is, uh, an, uh, this is from 2022. So we'll see some differences as we go through these. Now we had access to Alejandro Son's archive he used to photograph most, if not all his buildings. And we, this is part of his archive. So this is El Archivo that was built in 19, started building in 1985 and was finished around 91. Now we're back to Sete Metemajac. Again, these are Alejandro Son's own photography. As you can see, just things have changed. You can see it by how many trees are there, the graffiti on the walls. 
Now, if we go back to Los Angeles, here we have an image uh, by Ruthie Brownfield of the Archivo in a billboard built by Bob. This is in one of the gardens. Now we're inside the house. We're still looking at the Archivo. And here we've played with scale. And the way that finally the images were located in the house sort of give us a tour of Guadalajara itself through five of the buildings that Alejandro Son designed and built. Again, we're here looking at the Archivo. Now we go to, again, in LA, these are pic a picture of Tonatiu, Cabello of a picture of Onish Luque. I love this picture within a picture. Um, but this is how he got to see Onish's work. And now, Staying in LA and starting to talk about the objects and the furniture that both Bob and Fabian uh, populated uh, the house with. Here we have the archive vitrine. So just a very small selection of the big uh, archive that Alejandro Son made up throughout his career was here to to show. These were designed by Bob. And I, and I chose this image just to, if you haven't been able to go to the Mac Center or if you will go back, the way everything is laid out sort of framed the pieces over and over again from different angles. And we'll keep seeing glimpses of some of the work uh, through what's rest, uh, what's left of this presentation. Here we have Sonia and Oni's with the backdrop of Sonia's work. And I go back to this image, which is a, a bigger billboard, uh, also part of the play that we wanted to bring into the exhibition, again, civic scale, trying to put it into domestic setting. Um, this was also designed and thought of by Bob. Here we can see an image of Adam's work with the, what do you call these, mesitas, mm, stands, uh, Bob's as well. And these sort of do a, an echo into Sete Mete Mahak's use of brick lay, laying. And now we get to see some of Fabian's work, uh, Objetos de Jalata, that placed throughout the house, helped bridge, like Mimi said, all, not all, but some of the material culture that we were very keen in trying to incorporate into the show. Um, also, this is Fabian's beautiful work in the garden. And now I would like to, well, this is the end of my presentation. We have now some select images by the photographers and the designers to talk about. Um, so, Sarah, go ahead. 
I'll be, I'll be right here. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, thank you. I'm happy to be part of this whole exhibition and also the panel today to talk a bit about my part. Um, this was actually meant to be the last uh, image, but it doesn't matter. It uh, it shows the behind the scenes more or less of uh, my time um, photographing in El Archivo um, with uh, my um, assistants and um, with the security staff. Uh, yeah, I spent five days in Guadalajara and um, I was very happy that I got um, that building assigned because it's one of the largest um, by Alejandro Zon and usually um, in my work I'm really fond of these large scale housing structures. Um, I photographed a Congress Center in Berlin uh, and a utopian housing structure in Vienna. So this is exactly a scale I'm really, really interested in. I'm always curious how it looks uh, inside, how people live or work inside of these uh, structures. So maybe you can go next um, to the next image. Yes. Um, so when we were driving to El Archivo, this was uh, how I saw it for the first time. And we were driving through this very low residential neighborhood of Guadalajara when then all of a sudden this concrete castle um, was rising up in the background and this was quite impressive and I was really um, excited to come closer and I was very very surprised how lively it was so people were coming people were leaving um, there were shops outside with street vendors that set up their shops in the shade of the of the um, roofs and yeah, it had this very open public courtyard. I have another image of this. Uh, next one. Yes, where people were standing in line, uh, sitting on the benches, waiting, having a telephone call. So everyone, I heard everyone in Guadalajara who lives there has been uh, to El Archivo because it's required to go there to register. Um, birth or to get certificates there so it had this very open public courtyard in the in the front where I also felt very comfortable to stay um, for a longer time but as I said as I'm really interested also in always the inside um, I uh, really, really wanted to go inside of this block and we just knocked on the doors basically and um, the staff let us in and they were really, really um, nice and welcoming and very also surprised. I had the feeling about the attention. Um, yes, and they showed us all the plans. They had um, very archival plans as you see here from the city of Guadalajara. Yes, uh, we saw on the other images, I think from Google images that they were on the roof, there are all these white objects. I was really surprised by this light system Alejandro Zorn had for this building. So on the roof, he had these white triangle objects with which he um, could grasp the natural light inside of, of the tower of the buildings. Yes, and um, usually I'm, um, when I photograph in my work, uh, it involves longer periods of immersion to the day-to-day -day life of yeah, the subject I'm interested in or the building. So um, I did a truck series where I accompany truck drivers, or I did a project that build, about a building where I moved inside. So I think in this case, if I would have longer time, I would probably try to get uh, a job uh, there, maybe to really, as a security, <laughs> to really uh, um, get into it and, and experience the space from the perspective of uh, living or working there. Yes. 
um, one of the assistants that accompanied me, he was an architecture student from Guadalajara, and he said from the first semester, they learn all about Alejandro Otso, and so they're really, really proud of him, he said. Um, and it was so interesting for me that more or less outside of Guadalajara, um, the people didn't really know Alejandro Otso, and that was really surprisingly for me, yes. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Onyx. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here. And again, thank you for, for, uh, for the invitation, everybody in Max Center and the curatorial equip, uh, Mimi and Tony Macarena. Thank you very much. And well, uh, I was assigned to photograph uh, CTM at the Mahak, which is a housing unit. I have a previous work on, on modern housing units in Mexico City. Uh, I, 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 I guess that's why I was assigned to do this, this work and, and, and I really like it. And my approach here to this kind of, of, of works uh, I'd like to say that I have a like a dual practice because uh, I am a, an architectural photographer as a, my commercial work, and and it is really interesting how uh, most of the times that I uh, photo make photographs for architectural offices in Mexico that that ask me to to document their their work. Uh, the, the, the buildings are not in use yet, are not inhabited yet. Uh, and, in, and in my personal work, like this one, I very interested in how, uh, how, these, how, how uh, social relations take place in architecture and in these places and spaces. So my approach was that, like to see how after, maybe 60 or 70 years after this uh, building was built with uh, in, 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 in Mexican modernity, uh, when the Mexican national state was uh, giving money to make this kind of, of projects in order to, to consolidate the national state of Mexico. And uh, I, I really, uh, try to, to, to show the complexity and the dynamics of this uh, of, of, of the life taking place in this building. And these images that you are seeing on the screen, I choose them because uh, you can see this, this uh, sign with the hands, which it is uh, for, for the name the people who live in, in this housing unit gives to, to this place. It is, they don't call it CTM Atemajac, they call it Info 33. And it is uh, something that is related maybe with, with Sarah's work because it, is, it comes from bureaucracy. I mean, uh, this is the way that uh, the, the state uh, gives this, uh, uh, gave this, this uh, these houses to people in a in a in a bureaucratic uh, uh, way, and they call it Info Thirty Three. And for me, that is very symbolic because uh, I'm interested in in, in how people uh, um, appropriate the, the 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 space they live in, and this is very symbolic because when you name you give a name to the place where you live, it is a symbolic. Uh, way to appropriate it, and and I really like it because it comes from bureaucracy, as I said. But it has to do to break it because in bureaucracy you come like a number, like an statics statistics. I, uh, sorry for my English, uh, but uh, in this case it becomes uh, something that has to do with identity, and it is very important to me how people identifies and 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 make actions and 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 uh, tactics for appropriate their own uh, the place where they live it has to do with graffiti it has to do with these uh, kind of symbolic things 
So for me, it was very, very important to, to try to show uh, the complexity in this. Uh, can, can we change the, the, the picture, please? Uh, the, the way people uh, appropriate themselves of this place. And not only in this uh, uh, symbolic way, which is very important to me, but in the everyday life, like maybe with this image on the right, which shows how people put their pants to dry. Uh, this is a way of living. Uh, and, and, and for me, it's the way that I understand architecture, not only as a form or space or volume or light or shallow, but like a social relation, like the way people live and they appropriate these places. And uh, that's what I wanted to show uh, in, in the, the whole uh, piece that is shown in, in, in the children's house. Uh, there are 30 uh, images that tries to show this complexity that they uh, relate each other. And you can see how this is the, the third generation that lives there. Uh, I mean, it's almost 70 years after this building was thought, was built. Uh, modernity uh, was in that moment. We have like maybe 30 years of neoliberalism and necropolitics in these remains. This is how people live right now. So that's what I wanted to show in this with this piece. Thank you, Anis. That was beautiful. I'm quite inspired. Um, now, going on to the design side of things or material culture, so to speak, uh, we have Bob Dornberger, exhibition Hello. designer and fabricator. Hello. Thanks for having me. Um, I think as an artist designer, you know, I had maybe a, a different sideways approach to the work. Um, I've never been to Guadalajara and I've never seen these buildings in person. So I kind of had to take maybe a, a material formal approach. Um, I think Mimi, uh, when you came to the studio, you, you had some sketches already in mind, maybe thinking of some materials, the concrete blocks as a, a pedestal. Um, and I think really all I, all I brought was more specificity in the material, you know, thinking of these terracotta tubes, like we saw in the housing unit, um, and just keeping a real restrained color palette, material palette. Um, so here's some early sketches of how I was thinking of, you know, approaching these. These were very similar to what, what we did in the end. Um, I think we can even go to the next slide and um, so here's and then can someone chime in and tell me what building this is because I don't actually know. This is the Unidad Deportiva Lopez Mateos that Adam um, also took pictures of. Right. So I love this shape and it really worked for what we needed, you know, to hold the projectors, to hold some of the photographs. So this worked. Um, and it was important to me to like, as a designer, do things that are demountable. You know, we're not creating a lot of trash at the end of the exhibit. So, you know, all these parts can be broken down. I'll reuse the wood in my shop. I will, you know, repurpose all the materials. So this was important for me as a designer. And then I just, I love all the texture of these natural materials, so. I think they, they work well with the house. I don't know. I don't, I don't have much more to add. I'm a man Thank you, Bob. <laughs> and well, finally, finally for the images, here are some of Fabian Capello's images for reference to talk. Go, Fabi. Hey. Um... I'm so happy to be here with all of you, and I'm I'm really glad this is this is happening, and we get to, to talk more about the work of Alejandro Son and and the exhibition uh, that that is beautiful at the Schindler House. Um, 
Well, I'm a, I'm a product designer and I'm a furniture designer. I love to work with objects. And as much as I'm fascinated by the architecture of Alejandro Son, I must say that what fascinates me the most is how people uh, get to live in it, no? Uh, this is the picture uh, inside uh, the Mercado Libertad, uh, San Juan de Dios, uh, which is the main market in Guadalajara. I think it's interesting to mention also that um, I'm, I actually live and work really near, surrounded by Alejandro Sanz's uh, work. Um, it's very present in Guadalajara. As Lore mentioned, there are hundreds of buildings that he built mainly in Guadalajara. Um, and, and this is what interests me the most, and that's what I really create from uh, in my work. Um, there is a part of my practice that has been about uh, in, doing some sort of archival material from um, these very specific design conditions that exist in Mexico, and especially chairs that live in markets or in the streets, in food stalls, in car parks uh, that are that are always made from some very referential uh, shapes and material, but also that always include uh, some novelty to it or some uh, very interesting uh, and inspiring design uh, aspect to it. Um, and so, yeah, I, I thought that was interesting to show maybe like a, the, the, the smallest detail of the market. Um, and I think it's really clear to say that, you know, there is a material culture that developed around and from Alejandro Sanz's uh, infrastructure in, in Guadalajara. So that was uh, really uh, my point. The next pictures is taken maybe 400 meters away uh, from uh, where the first picture was taken inside the market. It's very important to mention that the market is one of the largest market structure in, in Latin America. It's also a huge area around it uh, that is a, a real marketplace no? um, with a lot of commercial streets. And one of the streets, uh, this is taken in Calle Cabanas, which is literally just right behind the market. Um, one, of this, one of those streets are, speci are specifically uh, used to sell Ojalata's work. Um, so of course, uh, Back in 2020, back back in 2019, when I decided when I started to work with Ohalata Maker, and I started really to investigate the economy around Ohalata more than designing objects, um, I got to hang out a lot there. Um, most of the product, I mean, some of the product that we see on this picture have probably been manufactured by uh, Arturo and Maria Vega, uh, who are the makers we mainly work with uh, to, to make uh, Obretos de Ojalata. Um, so it also, it's it's interesting for me to understand architecture much more than just the bricks, you know, like a few bricks uh, stack on top of it with uh, a lot of um, success or not, um, or a lot of uh, formal or aesthetic brilliance or not. I think what compose what really the work of architects is to make a city and i think it's it's really never about the architecture outcome as object but it's really about generating conditions uh, that are propitious to um you know like to to share the space that we have left in a in a in a city which is like a, a really functional machine no and i think alejandro zon has really managed to generate those conditions and to question those conditions um, for them to be propitious to um, um, to you know like to generate culture identity to generate a culture which is uh, which you can find in everything no which you can find in the material culture but also like the, uh, a culture that belongs to a city or that belongs to a group of people that inhabits the city. Um, and I think he, that's what I remarkably understand from his work is that he, he, he really talked about the condition of how to make a space that uh, was propitious for this, um, uh, for this citizen sort of uh, spaces that the city needs. And that's, that's, I guess, somehow it's two very weird pictures, not so much related to his work, but I think they really talk about uh, the impact he had on, on the city. Thank you. That was beautiful. 
Maybe I see you very happy. Do you have any <laughs> thoughts? Oh, I like just, to... it's so great to get the insight in, into each of these works. Um, uh, you know, some of some of this is sort of like uh, we have been in conversation with you all for, you know, almost, you know, two years uh, about this work. Um, and I guess maybe maybe we could talk a little bit about how how do you do you feel about translating something from Guadalajara to Los Angeles, like coming to the Schindler House and trying to figure out how at this time, particularly for um, Onis and Sarah uh, and Fabian, like how how does one make a translation, right? In a way, design and photography are both acts of translation. And we talked about the show as a kind of a translation and triangulation between different places. And um, anyway, I thought I'd, I'd maybe put that over to you to thinking about that idea of kind of coming back and forth. <laughs> And whoever uh, wants to chime in first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I was thinking as you were saying that about uh, I don't know maybe my 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 bad English, my difficulty with 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 expressing myself with English, but uh, how comfortable I feel about image because image has uh, it's it, it 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 seems to me like it it is it is like a language a wider language that. Uh, can uh, tell things in a wider way that, than 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 language like Spanish or like English or whatever. And I was thinking about uh, not only the language but ideas, and also thinking about Son as an immigrant. I mean, like like someone who 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 was forced, his family was forced to leave and to come to Mexico. And 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 how he's uh, like a product of, of of different cultures, and how we all are a product or or or, or a result of different cultures, and how the ideas doesn't uh, knows of of uh, borders. I mean, it's like uh, like um, you can have an idea in Guadalajara that makes sense in LA maybe and 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 that's that's the thing to me I mean like like there is something uh human that that goes far away from political borders right now today there is happening something very inhuman in 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 the US and Mexican border and 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 that and, and it is not casual that maybe today we are talking about the 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 the, the thinking and the of a, of an immigrant. I mean, and and for me that's 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 the thing how how our collective in, intelligence it's much more stronger than than political borders. I would say. I think Wendy Brown talks about this idea that for every hardening of a border, right, every time we put a political boundary up or a wall or something, um, the urge to transgress that border and the it is uh, the, that's the paradox of these walls, right? That that urge is uh, then to sort of make make work around and under and above and and cross it, right? That. Uh, that uh, yeah, it's a kind of entropy, creative entropy that uh, takes place. I mean, Sarah, you're you were coming from Europe, uh, kind of almost making that same uh, sort of sort of pa travel path uh, as uh, Son, um, you know. To, and then you came to LA, right? So um, you spent a lot of time thinking about the house. Um, and how your work relates to Schindler's work. And, and I was wondering if you could sort of tell us a little bit about that and the kind of working so very intimately um, with the house itself. Thank you for the question, Mimi. Yeah, I, I worked uh, actually a lot with um, the photos of the Schindler house at home 
And I was thinking a lot about how I can install these images um, because uh, so different in scale, the Archivo and then the Schindler House, it's so different in scale. I had the feeling from the images that I had from the Schindler House because I've never been there before, that it was very um, uh, low ceiling and fragile and very detailed. I saw um, all these frames in the facade and then the space, for example, now uh, the windows are separated in all these uh, frames or the chimney is a frame itself, the, the whole space. So I decided to have uh, these loose prints hanging in space, um, always in the existing frames of Schindler and to place um, these images centered in these existing uh, frames. And then when I came actually to LA, uh, it was again, totally different. Uh, it was even more intimate, the space when I entered, I had the feeling. Uh, so even more um, um, smaller scale that I thought um, from the photos. So also I decided then on site to have these little images. Um, like you can see it on one photo with the arm, with the, with the hand. We had, I think one photo of that in the presentation. Um, so another one. So these are the large scale um, prints. I, I choose different sizes, but most of them, I showed 22 images. Most of them were these little, very uh, small prints hanging. There was another one. Yes. There, yes, there you see it. <laughs> so um, the majority of the images actually had this size and I decided that also when I was in LA, this was actually a bit of a backup uh, that I printed all of the photos again, also in this scale. And I decided then also on site to um, to use them, which I really like um, generally in my practice to come to the space where I will exhibit and then uh, work with the space also. Um, and this was, yeah. And yeah, I thought uh, this, um, combination with the billboards, outside billboards, I really liked. Um, yeah, to have this urban urban space, the large scale prints. And then I had the last room in the sequence of rooms in the Schindler house. And I thought this very um, intimate last room, I showed all the interior images. So from the inside of the building and uh, yeah. This was the concept of, of how I was installing it. I mean, I think, um, I mean, I think the way that the house tells us things about the work that maybe we didn't know, right? Like there, there are resonances. Like it, it really kind of becomes uh, another one of the uh, participants. Clearly, um, uh, Fabian, I think your work, and you made some new stools uh, for this exhibition. Um, your, your work really does a lot of the lifting in sort of making that translation between civic Guadalajara um, and the kind of scale of uh, the marketplace and the scale of the city and the domestic interior. I, I would love for you to kind of reflect about, um, well, first tell us the story of the stools. Um, because I know the fabrics also have a kind of interesting civic history, um, but to also just reflect about how um, how your work lands uh, in the Schindler House. Um, <clears throat> I love to think about, you know, I, I'm a designer, but I really love to think about uh, the the city as a um, as a as a thing. And I one day I did a graffiti that said in the there's more phones than buildings. And I think it sounds really stupid, but 
you know, like everything that compose those huge infrastructure that Zone has been building um, are actually related to the very home of everyone that lives in the city or everyone that um, will come and, and buy um, goods at the market and export it to towns and other cities that um, that are around Guadalajara in the state of Jalisco. So I think for me, I'm always seeing the relation between things as a most as a motor for creation. And um, so for me, there is a really beautiful uh, sort of line that you can draw between this really civic infrastructure like the market and the uh, popular yet organized uh, functioning of the neighborhood around with the different trades that sells uh, different goods uh, in the different streets around the market all the way and I, I can see this line from that all the way to the Schindler's house the domestic environment I mean the Schindler house today is is maybe not treated so much as a domestic environment but it is and I think it reflects the idea of domesticity um, the, the stools are new. We made them especially for the exhibition. I was really keen on um, following your invitation um, to try to almost to try to convince people that Ohalata was a really valid uh, officios technique um, that can produce absolutely uh, very good. Uh, that are, uh, We're losing you. That are also like very functional today. Can you hear me? We you warped a bit. I think could you if you could recap, that would be great. Yeah, for sure. Um, yes. So when you invited me, it's good. I go when you invited me to uh, participate to this exhibition. I was really keen on pushing a little bit further uh, what can be done with a halata and trying to prove that it was a very uh, viable uh, technique to use today. Um, what, what it means also for me, which is really interesting, is like, what does it mean to, to, to build an um, element for the, for the house in a city, no? And what's about, what, what, do you, what does it mean that the city can almost like regenerate itself, you know, and build its own material world from the city itself? Um, the Ohalata trade is a really neighborhood based economies. Um, that I, I could say a lot about it and I, I don't think it's, it's necessarily the place, but I was really keen on trying to do like small furniture, which has not been done at all in the um, in the trade of uh, Ohalata, it's normally specifically items that are uh, leading with or that are in the kitchen, in the cleaning room, etc. So um, also one of the things that I've used is that I've used this textile that uh, we designed here in the studio um, uh, for a company that normally produces uh, textile for public transport. And there was this really beautiful ID. Alejandro Son built an amazing metro station uh, below the, the same market. So there was this idea that we were combining a little bit, you know, like a lot of element of reflection that I have about how an, how an object is absolutely related to how a, a city works and functions. Um, we're getting we're getting hearts, and I just want to also encourage our um, our attendees. If you have questions, uh, you can start dropping them in the chat, and also our participants. Like, if you, I was wondering if you had questions for each other, I'll let you think about that. I I wanted to ask Bob about your relationship as acting as a kind of furniture designer, exhibition designer for a, a work of artworks and how, how do you think about yourself kind of within um, this body of work? Yeah, well, definitely I, I wear a lot of hats so I will put on my artist hat and then take it off and then put on the builder hat and try and keep them separate. You know, I if we can go to the billboard image, the, the metal one, the one where, uh, Onis's image, it's, yeah, it's toward the beginning. But anyway, I, I did a, a, a 
metal billboard sculpture for a show many years ago. And I think we got to reuse it, which is great. But I think materially, you know, it's got this galvanized steel that Fabian uses in his work. So there's just a lot of layers of recursive design logic that, you know, I love. And then we use these clay tubes in the show, which, you know, ironically in Santa Monica are sold as wine holders. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to be on both sides of it. So I think as a designer, you want to just choose the most restrained material palette, but then also to work with the house that's so richly textured. I wanted to, you know, push the texture a little, like it's the, the umami of design for me. Can I, can I say something? Yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, Bob, I, I really liked your work and I want okay. to tell you, <laughs> but, but I was uh, wondering about this piece because it is, uh, it seems to me like a, like a flag. Where, where did it come from uh, that, that this billboard works like, uh, you know, like, a, like some kind of flag or something? Like I mean, that? I, I think I was asked to be in a show uh, curated by Bettina Hubby here in Los Angeles. And I, I was thinking about this personal billboard already, just, you know, a five foot six tall billboard, you know, that I could use. And then we decided to put it in the show. And I think I had like etched glass, but it was also very recursive. It was my checklist of things to do for the show to get the glass etched and these things. And the other side was a chalkboard. So it was kind of socially activated small billboard. I mean, I really just wanted an excuse to use this galvanized metal. So, I mean, it was great. And I think when uh, Mimi and Lorena came by the studio, they saw it and they were already thinking about billboards. Is this right? So they were thinking about the urban scale. So it was already, it was available and free. So I was happy to, happy to use it in the show. I like that there's all these kind of recursions starting to happen. Um, uh, Bettina Hubby was in an exhibition that I previously designed, uh, curated at the Schindler House. So there's uh, kind of echoes that that keep happening. But yeah, I think we felt I think we fell in love with your billboard uh, when we saw it at the studio, and we were like, we have to figure out a way to use it because everywhere we go in well in LA or in Mexico, the these billboards are part of the uh, urban landscape and and I think here in the front lawn of the Schindler house like it you you have to kind of find it like it only just peeks over the hedge um and someone was asking me like why is it only peak over the hedge why didn't you make it pop over the hedge and I think you know because you that's how you would see it if you were like kind of if it was a large scale billboard right you would always only kind of see it in in partial and um, and so I think it makes you have to hunt to go kind of find it and sort of make that kind of search. Um, you know, they're not to not to get too sort of evocative, but like the idea of seeking in the seeking zone really um, for me comes from this idea of you know trying to figure out this work really as uh, it was Lorena who sort of first introduced me to the work and um, and then after that, it was more kind of like a search, right? Trying trying to learn a little bit more about uh, the city, about Son, uh, about the arch each individual buildings. Um, so yeah, I think I think uh, this these continual sort of I don't know recursions are are, are super interesting. Uh, anyone else want to pop in with a question? I have a question. Oh. Go ahead, yeah. Zara. Go yeah. ahead. For our niece, actually, I'm curious because you, I know you do also a lot of uh, commissioned work for architectural offices, right? And um, 
usually I think the perfect moment for um, photographing architecture um, from the perspective of the offices is after completion completion of the um, construction site before people move in right so this is um, and um, but I'm always interested and in, you obviously uh, by the usage no? and the people then that live there and that appropriate the space. So do you think um, it changes a bit? Like um, do architecture offices also commission you to photograph their architecture and use? Um, or does your work, for example, also inspire the architecture offices or influence the architecture office in that sense that they say, okay, we would also like you to commission to photograph our architecture like one year later, for example. Yes, I guess uh, I, I've had the opportunity to, to work with some architectural offices that that uh, after seeing my, my work, they are like, uh, let's say, inspired to see the process and to not think about the, the architecture as a as a finished work, instead of something like a process that it is more uh, that is wider, but mostly uh, I guess it has to do with with uh, with like uh, trying to have control, you know, like to 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 have the control to to say what's in and what's not, because sometimes I guess and and. and and I really am very critical about it. I, I, I've talked with some of my clients about it. It's like if you are designing something for someone specific, like a house, uh, and, and you don't want to see the furniture this family or this person has, it's like you, you are not designing it for it, for them or, or what. And, and I guess it is much, much. Uh, richer to to show the place uh, the space in use because that's what for me that's what's architecture i mean uh, before that it's much more like sculpture maybe <laughs> i don't know but but the but the the, the sense uh, of architecture is to be inhabited so uh, i know that uh this 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 uh, ephemeral moment of the let's say the house it's inhabited but finished it 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 is real i mean it, it happens but uh but what i would like to do it, it would be like uh, have a, a document this this ephemeral moment of the of the building but also come after a year or two years or maybe five or ten years and also you you could see like the process of 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 the space being inhabited and used it would be beautiful i, I i've had like maybe two or three opportunities to do that mm -hmm. and for me and for the for the architect my client which uh, whom by the way it's a, a, a an architect from guadalajara uh, Luis Aldrete, it's it's beautiful. It's like you can see the whole process uh, because uh, he is he has the the, the uh, like the um, drawings and all the, the the project, and then you have the the construction site, and then you have this ephemeral moment, and then one year or two years after uh, the, the the building was uh, uh, finished, you can see how. What happens? I mean, it's like for the for the architects. I, I think it, it is it, it is super interest to to see if their ideas of how people is going it, it was supposed to live uh, uh, really happens, or if if, yes. if it is different and in in which way. It's something like what uh, Fabian says. Is it's not about the building and the bricks but the quotidianity and, 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 the, and the time you spend there and how you spend your time there, I, I guess it's, uh, it, it, it should be uh, something that maybe every architectural office would do. I, we know that the market, it's, uh, it has its own rules and it fetishized the architectural object in this precise moment like uh, like a pristine 
uh, object of art, but uh, the reality uh, for me, it's, it's, it's another one. Yeah, are there are there more more questions sort of from from both our participants and and from maybe Maeve? Uh, would you like to chime in? Yeah, I actually have a question for you and Lorena. We have half of the Seeking Zone artist cohort gathered here today, and I was just wondering how you paired um, the photographers with the buildings that they um, that they studied. Um, and also the decision to bring Bob and Fabian in on the design front. What were your just like curatorial thoughts behind that? Lorena, you want to take it? We could, we could, we could you start, I'll then finish. All right. Um, I guess the straight answer for me right now is I don't remember exactly, but it, if I had to do an archaeology of what we were thinking, um, I think photographers fell into the buildings we had selected very easily. There wasn't necessarily, um, uh, it was just precise thought, it, they just fit. Um, that's one thing I would say. And regarding Bob and Fabian in their own times and in their own capacities, it definitely had to do with how to bring more to the experience, sort of un unfold the image into uh, what we could, wh what these buildings contained, specif specifically the market, which I think it's very strong in how Fabian's talking about it and how, and I'll, I'll rephrase something that he said uh, when, when the opening happened, whenever you go to Alahara or you have someone come over for the first time, that is one of the top three places that you bring people and bring people to. So I think that would be my argument, maybe. And Fabian had his, has his hand up. Um, yeah. May I, may I ask a question, maybe to you and Mimi, but also maybe to everyone involved here, now that's an open question. Um, what does, what does the, I mean, I think there are a lot to say, it's not like a tricky question, but I, I wonder, like, did, did you think about uh, what does the exhibition can back to Guadalajara as well? I know maybe eventually the, the exhibition could take place in, in Guadalajara, which I think is an amazing uh, news, but also in terms of how, um, <clears throat> you know, there is a huge, uh, a huge discussion about the conservation of the mid-century modern uh, um, uh, building built environment uh, that is really strong today, especially in Guadalajara. They, 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 they are, um, you know, even like even, actually it is news that, you know, like this building has been destroyed and, and the city is really thought in another ways today. So I was wondering whether uh, you, Lorena, uh, that you are from Guadalajara, or some you, Mimi, that know it well and that understand what is happening here. How do you feel like the exhibition can also like feedback to to us, to the people that live here? Um, oh, I'll, st I'll start on this one. If, um, well, I think it's a, it's a great question. I mean, there's some different parts of it. I think for me, bringing awareness to Son's work um, outside of Guadalajara, um, and then as we worked on the show, um, sort of recognizing the archive, right? And sort of what uh, Diana Son, uh, Alejandro's daughter um, is doing, you know, sort of preserving his archive. It was really, I think the show is an important way to maybe bring awareness. And then with that awareness, um, additional institutions or funding or scholars to it. We, I, we never sort of set out to do a monographic show which was all about how Son, you know sort of lived his life through Guadalajara I mean, we try to tell his story but it's 
um, it's not the only story we're telling. Um, I think we're telling the story of the city as well and the and your narratives that come through in the photography. But I think it is a kind of entry point um, for an international audience um, into this work. And I think this goes a long way towards preservation. Um, the you know, questions of preservation, when a building remains in use, it is more likely to sort of be preserved, right? It's when it becomes sort of disused that it's no longer maintained and it falls into disarray. So the market itself, um, the fact of everyday life is its sort of number one, you know, sort of preservation on it, right? It was affixed almost immediately after the fire that happened um, late last, uh, sorry, in spring of last year, right? So this is, this is a way of kind of keeping it active. Um, the period of Zone's work um, sort of falling a little bit in towards late modernism is an area that is like, even here in the States, um, kind of precarious in terms of um, preservation, right? It's not quite old enough to be like a historic monument. Um, so it really kind of requires people to rally around the work and recognize its importance um, in order to kind of begin the processes um, toward towards preservation. And I, I know that uh, in Guadalajara, the um, uh, the uh, the Deportivo has had some repairs and sort of preservation happening on that. That's the uh, the one that inspired Bob's furniture. Um, and I think it's precisely because these are you know sort of municipal projects that people keep coming back to and use um, that it kind of keeps them uh, alive. Otherwise they would, they would really just fail. Yeah, Lorena, do you want to add in? Um, yes, a bit. I love the question, Fabian. It's going to get me thinking for a few days. Um, but I, I guess I would want to respond uh, in several ways. I think the iteration of this exhibition, once it gets to Guadalajara, hopefully it's, well, it's going to have to be different than this first iteration. And I am keen to see how that looks. I guess a general feedback that, that I maybe would want to provoke would be, well, we have, you know, Luis Barragan, a very fetishized, so to speak, architect that is a flag for many things. And I, for once, I would like to try to transcend that idolizing of the architect in, in a way and sort of expand it to, to more things and give it more Death with Alejandro Son. I know that in Guadalajara he's he's fairly known and quite recognized architect. Um, but something happens about Guadalajara and Tapatillos and Tapatillas in general. That there, there, there needs to be some sort of distance before ideas start to land in a different way. Um, and I might be going around in circles, but just a few months ago, there was in Guadalajara uh, a plaza honoring Luis Barragan, I think, right, in downtown. And it, it feels a little uh, weird in the sense that the government's just trying to appropriate Luis Barragan's you know, iconic role in architecture for Guadalajara's sake. So there, there's an endogamic sense there, but anyways, that's sort of a critique. And in terms of preservation, I think, uh, and also along with uh, preservation, just documenting and archives, I think that would be, if we could get to show more of his archive, that could be also, um, um, not, not only a gesture, but a, uh, an initiative to sort of, 
yeah, um, exalt his his work and what it means, not just the architect nor the architecture, but the experiences uh, in those spaces. Um, they they kind of hold on on their own, you know. I think that's my long answer. Um, I think, well, we, I, is there a question here or should I read Brian's? I, I see Brian has a question uh, uh, wanting to know about the archival objects in the show. Um, uh, so this is for everybody. Um, would you talk about your relationship with the archival objects? Um, what are the, based on the viewpoints of artist, designer, curator, fabricator, and perhaps how the plans and smaller handmade models relate to your understanding of the life of buildings? Uh, it's a nice question, um, Brian. Thank you for that. Um, the models uh, in the show are, they're twofold. There are some structural sort of mock-ups made out of wood. And then there was um, some objects, uh, a, a little matchbook type toy that um, Sohn brought with him from Vienna to Mexico um, as a young boy at eight. Um, and then we have his thesis book um, and then some transparencies um, and then images of his work. The, 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 I, how do I relate to this work? As a curator, um, there is such this word intimacy, like there, the touch of the artist's hand. And also when I learned that Sohn photographed most of his own work, um, like it just seemed so, it was almost like he was in the room right? Like that we have this um, relationship directly between his photography and the photography of the artist participating show or the objects, the mock-ups um, that are made. Um, so it, I think I, I find them, it's a small <laughs> but very powerful um, kind of se selection. Um, let, me, let me stop talking. I'll turn it over to everyone else. Um, I'll, I'll be brief on this one. I, I think as these objects and images and even the thesis book not only talk about Son's work, but they talk about the history of the city in a way, in a very fragmented um, way. And I, I think it's, um, yeah, intimate and beautiful and sort of also having been to the archive itself, knowing that this is just like a one small speck of it all makes it, um, yeah, I think important for us to show it in, in a way and to carry it, carry his images, his photographs to to today, yeah. Right. I remember one object that also I thought was very intimate or I saw his, I really felt his Austrian background when I saw this self-made um, button box, no? And we tried to find out what this word was. It was like a German Austrian word that I didn't know. I had to ask my, I wrote my mother, my uh, who grew up in Austria and ask her if she knows what this word means. <laughs> And we uh, found out that it means uh, button and then to to work with the button. So we figured it's it's this um, button box, I remember. Um, yeah, that was very nice uh, detail. You know, the the archive as it stands is um, is privately held uh, by the family and you know, I would love, I would love some attention on zone, which would be mean that the archive could be um, institutionally cataloged. Um, and so that, that too is quite fragile, right? I think we, the buildings are fragile and the archive um, itself is, 
uh, fragile. So as, you know, as attention grows around our show, um, you know, we hope that people can, I don't know, point, point folks in the direction towards um, helping to preserve the archive. Uh, there was an exhibition of some of Sohn's work uh, just last month in Guadalajara. Um, uh, I don't know. I like to think that because we were sort of kicking the wheels around the projects and sort of that maybe uh, folks felt compelled to, to do the work um, and sort of put it on view there. So um, maybe, maybe that's a little connection. Uh, maybe it's an overreach. It's just simultaneous, but um, I don't know. The more, uh, this is the kind of work where the more attention um, the better, I think, uh, to it in, in order to kind of bring up awareness. Um, I think, unless, are there other questions from the audience? Um, if not, maybe uh, I will pass this over to Maeve to kind of take us out and preview our next panel. Yeah, well, thank you, Mimi and Lorena, for moderating this panel, and to Zara, Bob, Onus, and Fabian for sharing um, just about your practice and relationship to your work and Guadalajara and the Schindler House and all the intersections that this um, exhibition embodies. Um, we're just so grateful for your contributions to the exhibition and for spending time with us today. So thank you all. Um, for everyone else, I hope you can join us for our next panel um, on June 1st with the other half of the Seeking Zone artists, um, Adam Wiseman, Sonia Madrigal, and the artist duo Lake Rea will be there, um, moderated by Mimi, and then the other um, half of Tony Macarena, um, Alejandro Olivari. Um, I'll drop a link in the chat where you can register, but um, that'll be June 1st at, at noon. And thank you all for spending, um, spending your afternoon with us. I um, really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you. See you guys. Thank you. <laughs>